Hello, and thank you everyone for coming to listen to pre the presentation on image cropping on Twitter. This is the work by Mena team from Twitter. There are going to be three presenters today, Kira Yi, I myself Tao, and Chuban Chu Mistra. We are ML researcher from Twitter. Let's first start with what image cropping algorithm is. The task for image cropping algorithm is that given any original image and the desired crop dimension, crop that image to fit the desired crop dimension so that it remain the most important part of the image. The way you can think of the use case is, let's say that you have a very tall or very long image, and you want to upload that to Twitter. Now, Twitter wants to crop that so that it fits nicely, so that it lays out nicely on a phone or laptop or browsers. And note that this crop dimension can vary based on what device you are on. The way the cropping algorithm worked is that given an image, there's going to be the machine learning model that predicts saliency score on that image on every region. Saliency score is a proxy for importance. You can think of it as the higher the saliency, that's the prediction that that part is the most important point that humans tend to case. Here, the heat map is showing the darker spot being higher salient point, and the yellow spot is the most salient point in the image. We then try to crop so that that yellow point is as the center as much as possible. And because it's so high on the picture, that's why the crop in the yellow rectangle is going to be the top of the image. And finally, it's going to be rendered like this on Twitter. The first issue that the user raised is demographic parity. What they did is they picked two individuals and attached the image of those two together. What they found is that the cropping image focused on just one particular individual, regardless of the position, whether they're on top or on the bottom. And if those two individuals are of different de demographic, that can look like a racist cropping. The second issue is male gaze. The user is concerned when the image of the woman is being cropped in the middle instead of the top. So here is an example where the middle is being cropped. And you can imagine that there, if there are more exposed skin in the eight pictures, then this can be a lot more provocative. The way we test demographic parity is we collect public figure images with their gender and ethnicity label, such as on the right-hand side here. We identify two tests, gender and ethnicity. For gender, we have to label male and female, and for ethnicities, we have white and black. And so we split them into four subgroups, like here with this group size. The way we test them is for each pair of those four subgroups, we sample one image from each subgroup and attach them together into one image. We record where the most salient point is on in that attached image. So here's an example where black male and white male is being compared, and here's one image from each. Because the most salient point is on the left, we record that black male is being chosen over white male. We repeat this experiment many, many times, and we see what is the number of, fraction, number of time, the fraction that the black male is being chosen compared to white male. Demographic parity is defined as 50 50%. And here's the result when we compare all those six, uh, four subgroups. I want to focus first on the right-hand side, which is the aggregate uh, when we compare between black and white and compare between female and male. Demographic parity line is 50-50, and bias here is defined as the deviation from the 50-50 line. Here, what is it showing is that there is indeed bias, white over uh, black, and a stronger bias on female over male with these numbers shown. The rest of the plot is showing a similar uh, results just at the subgroup uh, level. We also know that limitations exist from this label, that race and gender um, may want to be expressed by uh, people in a more uh, diverse way than just this categorization. For male case, uh, we look at images with at least one serum region uh, because that may have a crop not just on the top, but also in the middle or on the bottom. But even then, only a couple of 100 we found to have a non-head crop. And for those, it's because of text and jersey or backgrounds. We also add possible explanations that it may be contrast in the paper. We also found that the, at a saliency level, the bias is not as strong because the salient score are very close, which leads us to the next thing on ArcMax bias. Now we are focused on only the most salient point in each image. But it's important to think about what happens if you use the second most salient point to do the crop or the third one and so on. As you can see in the rightmost image, cropping around the second most salient point moves the crop from bottom to top. 
the second salient point is important as its saliency score is marginally lower than the top saliency score, as shown in the plot below. This instance highlights a type of bias, which we define as the argmax bias, and is specific to how ML models are used during inference. The argmax selection amplifies models bias whenever the cropping decision is repeated multiple times on a given input. Next, in most machine learning systems, the model returns a score for a set of possible decisions. At inference time, we always return the decision with the highest score. This is done to reduce computational cost of the model inference, as the top decision can be cached and reused. The highest scoring decision is called the argmax of the model given the input. However, on social platforms like Twitter, often the same decision has to be repeated multiple times, like cropping the same image. This repeated argmax creates a perceived bias, which is much larger than the model's true bias. In the example shown, the model's bias is in favor of the argmax is 10%, but the perceived bias will always be 100%, which is 10 times the model bias. The model score distribution only guarantees that the perceived bias will converge to the model bias on repeated sampling of the decisions according to the model distribution. This convergence is apparent in the bottom plot. However, no guarantees exist for argmax repetition. Sampling from the model distribution makes the decision-making process non-deterministic, and hence sampling is rarely used. Since items in social systems are distributed according to power law, the argmax bias for competing decisions might have a major impact on users' perception of the item, as well as in decision-making systems. Next, in order to allow our community to replicate our analysis, we uh, have uh, open source the previously used image cropping model, along with the code to interactively explore the model and generate image saliency visualizations. Next, our code has been successfully used in the algorithmic bug bounty program where participants identified additional biases in the cropping algorithm. Our quantitative analysis helped us uncover systematic problems in our cropping algorithm, as well as gave us some insight into what factors might be contributing to these biases. Now I'm going to take a step back and consider some deeper concerns from a more qualitative perspective. The primary risk associated with automated image cropping is representational harm, which is the harm associated with the depiction that reinforces the subordination of some group along the lines of identity or the intersection of multiple identities. Although we find no evidence the saliency model systematically crops out women's heads, in cases where this still happens due to jersey or lettering, the chosen crop still runs the risk of representational harm. Most users don't know what saliency is, they haven't looked at our analysis, they just see the final crop. And the resulting image may be interpreted in a way the user did not intend. Additionally, the user has no ability to change the crop to something more in line with what they wanted. For this reason, Machine learning based cropping is fundamentally flawed because it removes user agency and restricts users' expression of their own identity and values. Representational harm is highly contextual and culturally and historically situated. For example, think of how the interpretation of cropping could differ between a photo of two people, one darker skinned and one lighter skinned, if the context is they're holding a prestigious public office, for example, versus if it's a photo of criminals. This choice is laden with nuanced social ramifications that the model cannot understand, and an analysis using demographic parity would completely ignore. Framing concerns about automated image cropping purely in terms of quantitative metrics such as demographic parity fails to question the normative assumption of saliency-based cropping, which is the notion that for any image, there's a best or at least acceptable crop that can be predicted based on human eye tracking data. So we did this analysis. What happened next? What do we actually do with it? In May of 2021, we began rolling out changes to how images appear on Twitter. Now, standard aspect ratio photos appear uncropped on the home timeline on mobile, and we're working on further improvements that build on this initial effort to decrease our dependency on saliency-based cropping. Our analysis had some valuable insights, but it didn't tell the full story. We only looked at two sensitive attributes, race and gender, and they were conceptualized in a limited and US-centric way. So as Shubanshi mentioned, in August, we also held the first algorithmic bias bounty challenge and invited others to take apart our saliency algorithm to identify additional harms. We are pleased to see submissions that recognize the impact ML can have on groups beyond those addressed in our analysis, such as veterans, religious groups, people with disabilities, the elderly, and individuals who communicate in non-Western languages. In conclusion, we found that there were disparities along race and gender for Twitter's saliency-based image cropping model. These disparities were exacerbated by taking the maximally salient point, a phenomenon we term argmax bias that's a risk across many machine learning applications more generally. Due to the contextual nature of representational harm, we also determined that group fairness metrics on their own are insufficient and conclude that cropping is a task best done by Twitter users themselves. Thank you so much for listening. 
um, feel free to reach out on Twitter via the hashtag AskTwitterMeta.